If you're new to Corel Draw, this welcome screen is a great place to start. We have many resources to help you become familiar with how to use Corel Draw. Why not click on the Gallery tab? Here you can scroll through the many examples we have created by some of the best Corel Draw users in the world. When you click on the Learning Tools tab, there are many resources available. Be sure to watch the video tutorials, they really are very helpful. And also a quick note, X5 video tutorials are also available on YouTube and they're a great additional resource. If you click the Quick Start tab, here is where you start to go to work. Recently saved or open documents are listed here and of course a preview appears on the left hand side so you can see what that document was about. If your document's not there and you need to go to an alternate location, click Open Other and navigate to where you have your document. And if you're needing some inspiration, why not start with New From Template? New From Template has so many great ideas to just help you get started. Well, for right now, we're going to start out by clicking New Blank Document. The next screen is the Create a New Document dialog. Here we can give our document a new name, I'll put in Design Basics, and we can set the stage for the type of design work we're about to do. Now bear in mind, by default, we've set this up for professional print or if you like, to print from your home printer. So simply click OK or you can make changes. For example, if you're going to work on the web, you might want to set up for web work. You might want to change from millimetres to inches. Whatever it is you require, make your settings and click OK. It's important to understand Corel Draw is a vector-based drawing program. Simply put, that means in Corel Draw we create with lines, straight lines, curved lines, and objects that are made up of lines. Inside of an object we can place a fill or a special effect. And it's so easy to work with text. There are hundreds of typefaces to choose from so you have just the right choice for your project. And if there's a shape that you need or you can think of, creating that shape with the appropriate set of tools is so simple. The colour engine in Corel Draw is powerful and precise and we'll learn more about that shortly. And we can also import digital images direct from your digital camera or from clip art or images that you may have purchased online. Now, a digital image is what we call a bitmap or a raster-based image. To edit a bitmap, we need to use a bitmap editor, just like Corel Photo Paint. In fact, it's so easy. Simply select your digital image and on the property bar, Edit Bitmap appears. Click and your image automatically opens up inside of Corel Photo Paint. And here is where we really go to work. We can apply special effects, work with colour, we could even cut our image away from the background and place our lizard on an alternate background. Well what I'm going to do is go to Adjust and click Auto Adjust and then simply click Save. And automatically our image is reinserted into Corel Draw with all of our changes and edits. You know, working with a vector-based program is powerful. This vector-based design you can see here is completely scalable. I can shrink it down to a very small size or I could increase to an incredibly large size without any loss of quality. Well, it won't be long before you'll be creating a design similar to this one. We simply need to learn the tools. In fact, why don't we go ahead now and look at some of the tools we'll be learning. There are a number of things about the toolbar to consider. First of all, when I hover my mouse over any of the tools, as you can see, a tooltip appears. The tooltip gives you a brief overview about what the tool does, and if you can select that tool via a keyboard shortcut, it will appear inside the brackets. In this case, F5 would select the freehand tool. Can you also see a number of tools have this little triangle alongside? That indicates there are more tools available. Click the triangle and out comes a flyout menu giving you access to the additional tools available within that set. Well I'm going to go ahead now and select the artistic media tool. 
Now, did you notice, as I selected the Artistic Media tool, the Hints Docker automatically updated with hints about how to use the Artistic Media tool? In fact, any tool you select automatically updates the Hints Docker. And in fact, we also have in this release a Videos tab. Now the video tab of course is under the hints docker and there's a lot of really great tips here and videos for you to learn how to use Corel Draw if you're new to Corel Draw. For example, if I click here filling and outlining objects, automatically the video opens up and begins to play. And here we're seeing a demonstration of how you can click on a color well and drag a color to fill an object. They really are an excellent way to familiarize yourself with Corel Draw if you're not used to using Corel Draw. So keep an eye open for the Hints Docker. It really is a great place to start. Let's go back now and have a closer look at the Artistic Media tool. Now notice with this tool, there's a number of properties that become available on the property bar and they actually change depending on which tool you select. In fact, we have access to four additional tools here. The brush tool, sprayer tool, calligraphic tool and the pressure tool. For example, let's look at the calligraphic tool. With this tool, we have the ability to create strokes that look like they've been created with a calligraphy pen. Selecting the sprayer tool, that gives us access to categories. So I choose my category and inside of my category there will be a spray pattern option. Choose the spray pattern I want, begin to draw and that pattern will appear. Now while that's selected I can still change that to an alternate pattern. Choose that pattern and it will automatically update. Now with the brush tool I have the ability to draw lines that look like brush strokes. Again choose your category, from the drop down menu choose your brush stroke and simply begin to draw. And of course, you can do this with a pen tablet or with a mouse. Again, I can update that brush stroke while it's selected by choosing an alternate. Change the color, right click on the no color well to remove the outline, and you can create some great looking effects. Finally, let's have a quick look under preset. By selecting preset, I have access to a number of preset strokes. Now whether you're using a pen tablet or a mouse, these strokes help you simulate sketching on a pad with a pen. So let me just choose this first stroke and I'll show you how easy it is to create an effective looking design in really what is just a few seconds. Now I'll lower the stroke width down a little and then I can add just some little highlights and how effective and easy was that to do. Okay, now I'm going to tap my space bar which automatically takes me back to my pick tool. That will allow me to select my object. Whenever selecting an object, you can either click on an object or draw an, a marquee. That's what that dotted blue line is around an object to select all of its components. Then I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. Now I want to demonstrate for you how to draw basic shapes, so we'll do this by starting with the ellipse tool. In fact, can you see here for the ellipse tool, there is a little flyout menu available. In fact, there is with all of these tools here. Let me quickly show you what you can do with these flyout menus. See these dotted lines across the top here? We call those a grab handle. So if I grab that menu and pull out, it becomes a toolbox. I can then reshape my toolbox and reposition it anywhere on my screen. And that applies for all of these flyout menus. Take the grab handle, drag, and that then becomes a toolbox you can reshape and place. You'll notice these dots appear in various places around the interface. In fact, I can undock this entire toolbox. Simply click on the grab handle and drag and pull away. I can then place it wherever I want. If I want that to go back to my last location, simply double click on the title bar and it will automatically redock. Now, to be able to do this, we need to make sure that our toolbars are unlocked. So right click your mouse on any toolbar and down the bottom there you'll see lock toolbars. Well right now it's not selected, we don't have that little highlighted tick there. However, if I click on it, the toolbars become locked. So if you can't see those grab handles, you need to unlock the toolbar right click and click unlock or lock toolbars to deselect that. Okay, 
Moving along, as I said, I want to quickly have a look at the ellipse tool to demonstrate for you how really all of the drawing tools work. They very much work the same way when drawing shapes. And that is, click and then just simply drag your mouse, holding your left mouse button down in any direction to create the size and shape of the object that you're creating. When you release your mouse, you have a number of resizing handles that appear around the outside of the object. To scale, select any of the four corner handles and you can simply scale down or scale up, maintaining the exact same shape but of course just simply changing the size. Or alternately, you can resize using the left or the right horizontal handles and that of course does change the actual shape of the object. Same with the vertical, top and bottom resizing handles. And then that little X in the middle, you can click on that to drag your object around on the screen. Well, another great update in CorelDRAW X6 is found under Window, Dockers, and it's the Object Properties Manager. Now, the Object Properties Manager, or Docker, has really had a workover, and now we have access to virtually every property about the object we have selected. So in this case, you can see these are the properties of that object right now, and should I want to make a change, for example, the outline thickness, or add a fill color, or in fact, I can even apply my fountain fill, change the colors inside of the fountain fill. It's very, very easy to work with. And overall, you may find over time that you have a number of dockers open. And right now, you can see there are two dockers open, the Hints docker, and the Object Properties Docker. To move between the two is really very, very easy. And should you want some more working area, you can actually collapse a docker to move that docker out the way. And when you want it back, simply expand that docker again. Now the Object Properties Docker is invaluable when working with text. If I select the text tool, click and begin to type, As you can see, the Object Properties Docker contains all of the properties and parameters about my piece of text. Now while it's selected, from the drop-down menu, if I hover over a typeface, automatically that typeface updates on screen. And there are hundreds to choose from. I can also go ahead and change the fill color. I can apply an outline. I can change the outline color. I can even convert everything to all uppercase. Working with text and the object properties docker in CorelDRAW is just simply brilliant.